Hello class, welcome back. I'm excited to have the chance to walk through these slides with you for this module. Today we're going to be talking about the organizational development practitioner and the consulting process. I want to cover briefly the following elements, understanding the main consulting models and the pros and cons of the different models, understanding the essential char uh, character of the OD practitioners, the necessary competencies required of an effective OD practitioner, and understanding the roles and ethical conflicts that might face an OD practitioner. Uh, we will try to go through this in the next 15 minutes or so to give you an overview um, to complement the reading and some of the other activities and assignments going on this week. All right, to start off, I want to talk about the organizational development practitioner, starting with a brief discussion about internal and external consultants. As we've already talked about and you've read about uh, leading up to this point in the semester, Ultimately, you have two main approaches to doing organizational development and change. One is an internal consultancy model and the other is an external consultancy model. Right now in your team projects, you're, you are external consultants. You are outside of the main organization. They have now approached you. You are in the process of going through and doing a needs analysis and understanding um, how you can best help them, and then you're going to do a project for them. The same sort of thing, though, can happen with internal consultants, particularly with large organizations. They'll often have uh, an HR department or even an organizational development department where they'll have an internal consulting arm that can essentially do the consulting work and go around from division to division and department to department. Uh, I've done work like this internally for multiple organizations. And I've also done work like this externally as a consultant for many organizations. Um, there's pros and cons to each. Uh, when you have uh, someone who's internal, they know the lay of the land, they know the politics, the landmines, all that sort of stuff, but they also uh, can definitely be swayed by um, inertia and just the way things are. And sometimes it's a hard it's hard for them to see uh, things from a different perspective. External consultants can bring in those external perspectives, but sometimes they don't fully grasp um, the particulars of what's happening within the organization. So external consultants have to do a lot of extra work to try to understand the context and try to figure out how they can best help the organization. Um, professionals from other disciplines also can apply OD practices, total quality management, IT, compensation and benefits. Um, each, in each of these disciplines, there are um, ways that you can do change in organizational development. And then there, probably the most change that happens within organizations is just from middle management, uh, managers, administrators who apply OD um, to their line or staff positions. Uh, and so, Again, think about the organizations you've been a part of, uh, the vast majority of the types of change initiatives and organizational development stuff that we see happen in organizations is usually run by people um, who are just doing their best. They don't necessarily know how to do what they're doing. Um, and so uh, that's actually one of the reasons why uh, an internal or external consultant can be helpful uh, to provide expertise, uh, but it also speaks to the importance of everyone having a, base and a basic level of competency with OD um, elements so that we can effectively lead people and change within organizations. Now, there are many advantages and disadvantages. We're not going to do think pair share, of course, but you'll have an opportunity in the discussion on Canvas this week to think about this question. Um, advantages and disadvantages to being an internal and external consultant. Many of these are listed in the chapter. Can you think of others based on your reading of the roles of internal and external practitioner? Which role do you think is easier, more rewarding? Which role do you think you would prefer? Uh, I will just say for myself that I have very much enjoyed um, being a consultant both internally and externally uh, within multiple organizations. Um, they both have their benefits and they both have their drawbacks. Uh, ultimately, I think though what I've found through my experience is that we do have a significant opportunity to influence those around us, whether it's in a formal or informal role, whether it's internal or external. So I look forward to seeing what you guys talk about in your discussion this week. All right, the role demands on OD practitioners. We already talked about the position, whether you're internal or external, um, but also marginality, the ability to straddle boundaries. Uh, all the way back to the first week of the course, we talked about the interdisciplinary nature of organizational development, how important it is. 
that OD practitioners bring with them um, a, a wide breadth of understanding and knowledge across human development disciplines and social science disciplines, business, and the, the ability to communicate across those silos and those those different functional areas uh, within a business. Um, so agility and the ability to straddle boundaries, the ability to be flexible and comfortable with ambiguity and complexity and understanding uh, that we need to be able to uh, not just do that so we can navigate as a consultant, but also because we have to be able to communicate what we're doing and how we're doing it and what we're finding and the meaning behind those findings. We have to be able to communicate that to people across roles, across divisions, across different boundaries. Uh, there are a lot of emotional demands potentially for being an OD practitioner as well. Uh, so it requires a lot of emotional intelligence. Um, you, you simply have to be able to navigate people, relationships, communication. Um, and sometimes you're dealing with hard stuff. Sometimes you're dealing with things that could end up impacting real people uh, and their livelihoods and the organization and policies and practices and procedures that have real impacts on people. So it, sometimes that can take a toll. So you have to be able to practice emotional intelligence. And of course, an OG practitioner needs to be able to utilize knowledge and experience in an effective way to help uh, the organization move forward. Here you can see a little diagram about um, the client versus consultant knowledge uh, and how we might how this might inform the way we interact with clients. So in the top left corner, you see use of consultants knowledge and experience. In the bottom corner, you see use of clients knowledge and experience. Um, a consultant, as, as a consultant, you're going to be doing these following steps. So starting at the top, working your way down plans, implementation, recommends and prescribes, proposes criteria, feedbacks the data, probes and gathers data, clarifies and interprets, uh, listens and reflects. Um, ultimately, when you get all the way to the bottom, where you're utilizing client knowledge and experience, refuses to even become involved. Um, what this means is... If I'm going into an organization as a consultant and they think they already have it all figured out um, and they're not willing um, to work with me in the ways that I bring skills and knowledge to the table, then that's a problem relationship. That's not good for them. That's not good for me. Um, we don't want a client refusing to get involved because they don't feel like they can utilize us. And, and sometimes I've refused to get involved with an organization because I don't feel like they're willing to adequately work with me. Ultimately, you can see the various elements, and we've talked about these in previous weeks, uh, but we need to, to have a reciprocal relationship where we can listen and reflect together, that we can clarify and interpret the needs of the organization. The, the client can help the, the OD practitioner probe and gather data, um, and then together you have to be able to feed back the data. Uh, then it comes to the consultant to propose criteria, make recommendations, and even plan the implementation, but all that has to happen in conjunction with and jointly with the organization and the client um, manager or the people that you're working with. And when those things don't happen or when they happen separately, then typically a project just won't be successful. Okay, so here's something else to think about. We're not obviously not taking time to do this in this format. Um, but there are many different models for OD consulting. Three common models are the um, expert model, the doctor-patient model, and the mechanic model. Um, I would encourage you to think a little bit about um, the different client expectations across these types of models, the different role that a client might play within the model and the OD practitioner within each model. Um, what, what do you think it would look like if a client held this model in his or her head and how would that influence your relationship with them? And what would you say to a client who assumed this model represented OD consulting? So do you think an expert model is OD consulting or do you think a doctor patient model is the epitome of OD consulting or the mechanic model? The reality is there's a time and place for each. Uh, each can have its benefit. Each can have its limitations. Uh, ultimately, we part of what we do as practitioners is try to manage expectations and working with a client and help them to understand what we are and what we aren't, what we're going to try to do for them, how we're going to do it, what we need from them in order to do it, and all of those sorts of elements. 
For the next few minutes, I want to talk about the competencies of an OD practitioner. First, it requires intrapersonal and interpersonal skills. Intrapersonal meaning within yourself, self-awareness, um, critical self-reflection. We have to understand our own biases. We need to understand um, how that informs the way we interact with others, the way we view the world, the way we interpret data. And interpersonal skills, the ability to work with others in groups. These two elements are really, really key. And if someone doesn't have this, uh, they're going to really struggle to be a successful um, consultant and OD practitioner. Um, I, I know many people who actually have pretty good interpersonal skills and they work well with others, but they don't necessarily have great intrapersonal skills or vice versa. And it can cause a lot of problems. Uh, there are general consultancy skills, the ability to manage the actual process, time management, project management, um, uh, customer relationships, uh, all of those elements, and, and then just carrying out the project. Those are technical, practical skills that are that you learn. You can learn very easily over time and develop and practice, um, but you definitely need those as you move forward. And then organizational development and theory, the knowledge of the change process, the different models, the different approaches, best practices across industries and different types of situations. Um, that can also come with time uh, as you get more exposure and as, as, you, as you work with different organizations and as you read more um, and come to understand more about the types of common challenges organizations have. Um, each of these is really key though. And interpersonal and interpersonal skills those can also be developed, um, but it requires, I think, a lot more work to develop those types of skills. And so we need to be very thoughtful and careful as we work towards working with other people and teams. Uh, and then we can, over time, develop general uh, consultation and organizational development theory skills. Some general principles, I think, that are helpful. Uh, when we go into any sort of uh, consultancy experience, we always need to try to be helpful. This brings with it the basic idea of do no harm. So if I'm going into an organization, I want to leave it better than how I found it. And I certainly don't want to cause harm by me being there. So if I feel like I can go and I can be of use to them and I can help them understand things and I can help them develop new policies, practices, uh, materials, things that they can utilize to make themselves more efficient, more effective, um, then that's something I feel good about. I need to be able to access my ignorance. I need to understand, and this, this comes back to intrapersonal skills and self-reflection uh, and awareness, but I need to be able to recognize my gaps and I need to recognize where I need to fill in those gaps by bringing in core people around me or by doing additional research. Um, everything I do as a practitioner in the OD space is an intervention, meaning I am influencing and impacting the organization in some way just by me being there, whether that's a meeting with the client, uh, meeting with stakeholders, meeting with employees, doing a survey, running a team building activity, uh, run, running a workshop, um, anything, any of that stuff, all of that is part of the intervention. And likewise, everything is data. Everything gives me more information and more, more understanding. Uh, the client owns the problem and the solution. And so part of what I need to be able to do is help them understand the problem and the solution. And then I need to be able to hand off the baton to them so that they can run with it once I'm gone, because I'll only be there for so long. We have to go with the flow. Um, so you have to be structured, but also flexible and share, share with others, share the problem, talk to other experts, talk to your client, um, be open with them, and that will lead you in good stead. Um, in terms of think, pair, share, obviously, um, this is something you, you'll have the chance to do in the discussion this week, but which competencies for organizational development consultants do you see as mandatory or absolutely necessary? And which of these skills or knowledge areas do you feel you are more or less proficient or deficient? Um, and what can you do about that to fix that uh, moving forward? These are critical things for us to consider. Lastly, um, we're, we're just about out of time, but a model for ethical dilemmas. Basically, we need to be thinking about processes and consequences. We need to think about stakeholders and how they're influenced by what we're doing. When we are thoughtful, we can preempt some of the challenges that we might face, but we'll all face ethical dilemmas. And so we just have to do the best we can to face those and deal with them when we come in contact. I think that's all for now.